What's up guys and welcome back to another EVE Online video. Uh, today we're continuing the PI uh, series that I'm running uh, where we get set up end-to-end -end, uh, doing all of the PI required for fuel block manufacturing on a single character. So uh, most recently you saw me set up my first T1 extraction planet where I was just trying to get reactive materials. Um, one of the things that we'll talk about in the final video of this is is um, the materials you need to actually do the whole thing end to end um, and one of the things to consider is if you want to do T1 extraction from every planet and then still have a manufacturing planet which is how I like to do things there's actually not enough planets to do that on one character so during the build path you need different you need varying quantities of each material and uh, you need less of some than others so I know that I need less uh, electrolytes and water than uh, some other stuff like the reactive metals so I'm gonna set up two T1 extraction facilities on one planet you can get both electrolytes and water on a storm planet so I have a storm command center here and I have my storm planet in system. So let's have a quick look. I will uh, mundock to my epithal, um, if you've seen the previous one, which I will link here, which covers all the detail of how really to set up as the T1 extraction facility. So if I miss any detail in this video, you can go and check that one out, linked in the top right. So in my epithal, I've got going to check out my storm planet MPI. Here we are. And first thing we have to do, as always, is place a command center. Now, it doesn't matter where you place the command center, um, as mentioned before, uh, because we are not going to connect anything to it. What does matter, though, is where we can get our water and our electrolytes from. So water comes from aqueous liquids. Electrolytes comes from ionic solutions. So let's have a quick look at the distribution of these materials across the planet. Aqueous liquids fairly well distributed. We should have no problem finding somewhere to put that. Ionic solutions, similar, but in those bands, really, kind of in two bands, uh, in what I guess would be the temperate regions, if this was a temperate planet, or Earth. Um, okay, so that's interesting. So if we just look at, for example, this blob, We've got ionic solutions there, but no aqueous liquids, okay? Let's go look at this blob, ionic solutions, some uh, aqueous liquids, but not too many. That's not uncommon, because um, you will normally find where you have an abundance of one material, you don't, you have a shortage of another, which is, which is pretty standard. And that does cause an issue when you're trying to do T2 materials on a single planet which is why I tend to avoid it and just do T1 extraction because the nice thing here is our two, T, our two T1 extraction facilities and the whole setup that goes with them technically don't have to be anywhere near each other they are not linked uh, we can do them completely independently if we want to uh, which means the links that require power and everything to go uh, you don't need to send them halfway across the, the planet and we will uh, go into more detail of that now um, one other thing just quickly to mention if you want to do this as efficiently as possible I would recommend going to command center upgrades 5 um, which I have got on this character reason for saying that is if you if you're running just one um, you get command center upgrades 5. If you're running just one um, T1 extraction facility on the planet, that's a bit overkill. But in order to do two, um, like we're obviously not going to be able to max out because there's a limit to the amount of um, power. So as much power as possible to get started. Right, let's go back to that planet. It's annoying that it closed it. View planetary industry. Oh, and something else I meant to mention right at the start, but I forgot um, before we dive in in detail. I'm operating another another giveaway this video. Uh, you can win the Stratios uh, skins. 
which are the the Stratios partner skins which let's just have a quick look here Stratios uh, it's the scope syndication YC122 skin which I really like um, and it's one of the benefits of being a partner now is I can give these away to my viewers so we're gonna roll another three on this video so if you are interested in winning this skin which is very very nice if you want to use it or if you don't want to use it you can get you can sell it on the market for something around 300 million isk you can only get these from from Eve partners um, Yes, if you're interested in entering for the giveaway, uh, make sure you like the video, are subscribed to the channel first and foremost, and then comment below how many planets you have total in your PI setup. I'm genuinely interested because we have some uh, extreme PI people in my group. Uh, like I'm up, I'm into the mid 30s now, but I've got a, a courtmate who's somewhere in the mid 90s on planets. Um, which is obviously pretty extreme, but I'm really curious to know how high yours are. And also make sure you put your in-game name so I can contact you if you're a winner. Okay, without further ado, let's get our Storm Command Center place down. I think this is going to be a good location. The Command Center location, as mentioned, doesn't really matter. But I personally like to have it quite close to my facilities. Uh, because that's where the map opens up. When you load your planet, you you load on the on the command center. Oh, here's actually a very good bit for aqueous liquids. How's the ionic solutions? Non-existent. Okay, so we're going back over here. There. Yeah. Okay, so let's build command center. Put it here. submit and then we need to spend a little bit of cash not much maxing it out 6.3 million and now we are maxed okay so our two tier one extraction facilities let's start with um, ionic solutions which is going to allow us to do electrolytes we of course need an extractor control unit to allow us to tap into all this glorious stuff. We are also going to need a launch pad which will allow us to send our items into space. Launch pad and I also want a storage facility. You want to get these as close as possible because we're going to be using, we're going to be maxing out the the lo power load and CPU load, and links use power, so we want to get these as short as possible for the links. And then let's set up base, basic industry facility, which take, lets us process the raw materials into the tier ones. And we want a few of these, so let's do. Let's start with four. I think, and we'll see where we end up. Actually, I'm just going to start with three for now. Because what we want to be careful of is making sure we can place enough extractor heads and things down. So, starting with three for now. And then I'm going to swap over to my water facility and do the same thing now as mentioned th these don't need to be linked at all so we could we could just go around now and find the best water which is way around here which I'm tempted to do uh, I am gonna do it's a bit annoying because when we'll, when we uh, load the planet now we'll always open up like with this view it'll be sort of like this and then we'll have to go and find our water facility but it's kind of worth it so I'm going to go for exactly the same setup. So I want my extractor control unit, which we'll place just here. I want my launch pad, which means we don't have to connect the two facilities. 
and I'm also going to drop a storage facility again of course and let's get cracking with our three basic industry facilities so once we put these in we'll have a look quick look at the power and CPU load because we're already not extracting anything at this point yeah so I'm just going to run the links as well like that and see now we've got to find our other facility which is over here and I'm going to do the links again I'm uh, the for the links I'm doing from the con the extractor con control sorry extractor control unit to the storage facility and then just linking a path through the other the industry facilities round to the launch pad nothing needs to connect directly as long as they're collect collect connected through a path so all this will go and store it in here and then this will fill that fill that fill that without a direct connection and then each of these will produce and go into the launch pad again without a direct connection okay so let's hit submit on that for now now I wanna this is my ionic solutions one you want to keep a close eye on power load and CPU load again for the number of heads we're putting in one two three four gives us a bit of room to play with and if I send this up to the maximum of like the short cycles which is one day 45 minutes we can see that we're averaging 24,000 per hour from this extraction cycle with four heads that's an average of 24,000 per hour these numbers aren't strictly accurate because it's also based on your skills um, so just bear that in mind but if I hit start extraction nothing happens until I run submit but we can then just have a quick test um, we can see products we're getting 16,000 that needs to be routed which we're going to route to the storage facility again if you think I'm lacking any detail here check out I'm going to link it again in the top corner check out my earlier video on how to set this uh, these up in detail but if we've got 16,000 units coming in here um, every 15 minutes each one of these facilities needs um, oh come on uh, all right create route to there each one of these requires an input of that's not working properly there we go 3,000 units every 30 minutes but we're getting 16,000 every 15 minutes and we're only using 9 every 30 with this so we're going to have a pretty big overload um, so we're going to want to add one or two more facilities if possible so now just really quick we're going to go and do the same up here so that we can just check the numbers but I think we're going to want to put down another couple of uh, industry facilities if we can but it's going to be tight to look so if we put four on here again like this uh, also by the way these numbers are so big because we're in wormhole space the um, distribution of, of resources in wormhole planets and nullsec planets is way way higher than in high sec like this is absolutely possible in high sec but um, of course it's more efficient in wormhole space so let's run one day 45 again one day 45 start extraction and how many are we getting out of this one products we're getting 15,000 ish so yes we are going to want to four heads I think is going to be good so let's see how many more basic industry facilities we can get down with our four heads or oh, one probably per planet per, per facility sorry let's try another one yeah that's the limit I can't place any more of these now so all we can do is four 
let's make sure that we can link them we cannot we don't even have power to link them all right that's a shame so okay not a problem it just means we're going to run slightly inefficiently so I can either kill a head from each one uh, let's just go we were getting more ionic solutions than we were aqueous liquids so I'm going to decommission this which and then we'll keep this one in with a link and then we're pretty much there we just got to install everything that's, that's a shame we've got quite a lot left but not enough for one more facility we could of course try and like tighten everything up just to make absolutely certain but I don't think it's really necessary it's not going to do enough so that's our ionic solutions over here which is getting our electrolytes I'm going to keep four heads over here and three facilities and over here I'm going to keep four airheads but go to three just to double check I'm going to see if I've got enough power to add another head now no wait I do so I'm going to add one more head what about over here can I add one more head no you might think well, like if you if I you know what you didn't have enough facilities to deal with the, f the materials you got coming in why would you add another head um, it's because of our storage facility so this can store a lot 12,000 units of material so while of course um, our facilities will generate a pretty big backlog that backlog can just sit here and if I've got a big backlog and not as many facilities I don't have to log in every day to reset them basically it'll keep running while the extract facilities aren't aren't working so okay that this is the setup we're going to go with um, and when inevitably we have more electrolytes than water down the line what we'll do is just rebalance and just swap it around so that we maybe spend a couple of weeks with our electrolytes facility looking like this and our water facility looking like this and then after a couple of weeks swap it so our water facility our electrolytes facility looks like this and our water facility looks like this but it's still pretty low maintenance so I'm just going to run and put the schematics in now I want electrolytes going to here I want electrolytes going to here and then I also need my ionic solutions going to each one and then that facility is done find this one and do the same thing but with less stuff so let's do water from here and route all of the outputs to the launch facility again and then incoming aqueous liquids to each one done get the program installed because it forgot because I was playing with it okay and when we hit submit there we have it we have our two tier one extraction facilities on the same planet completely unlinked but here they are operating as they should now this you'll see why I recommended the maximum command center upgrades for this because you know we got pretty tight already it's possible as well that the link this one will be probably fine let's go check the link on this one 
the link that connects the extractor facility to the storage facility is actually fine. It's at 32%, so that's no problem. You can see that figure um, here, where my cursor is when I when you hover over each one of these. You can see the figure that comes up that's with the associated link. Uh, but yeah, that's it, I guess. So this is now going to run for 15 minutes. These will go into this facility, and then they will fill up all of those. And I'll log in back in every now and again to launch them into space and to reset the extractor heads. There's almost definitely more efficient ways of doing this. There always are in PI. People have different ways of doing things, and they've sat down and done the maths and things. So please do your research as well. But here's what works for me. And now with my reactive metal facility over here and my water and electrolytes facility here, I've got three of the materials I need for uh, fuel block manufacturing coming from just two planets so there we are thanks so much for watching guys make sure you've entered the giveaway uh get so many skins now as an eve partner that i i'm really struggling to give enough of them away so get get involved um and i will see you all in the next one cheers